antifibrinolytic therapy. In the previous video, in this amazing playlist about bleeding and coagulation disorders, we have talked about tranexamic acid. If you have understood the previous video, this one is going to be a piece of cake. I've told you before that we have antiplatelets, such as aspirin, such as clopidogrel, such as lots of other stuff, and we have the fibrinolytic therapy, such as TPA. What's the antidote for aspirin? It doesn't exist. What's the antidote to TPA? And the answer is tranexamic acid and amino caproic acid. What's the name of this Greek letter? It's epsilon. I know Greek, of course, because I'm an Egyptian guy. And Greece is just like they are our neighbors on the opposite side of the Mediterranean Sea. We love each other. We both can get thalassemia and G6PD deficiency, and this is none of anybody else's business. Okay, so epsilon amino caproic acid, that's why the abbreviation is E A C A, and this is not Obamacare. With that being said, now let's get started. Hemostasis has many steps, temporary blood plug, coagulation, etc. What was the job of TPA? To destroy the clot, causing fibrolysis. What is the job of tranexamic acid or amino caproic acid? Is to preserve the clot and prevent fibrinolysis. So this is the TPA that destroys the clot and causes fibrinolysis, but not under amino caproic acids watch because it's gonna preserve the fibrin meshwork. As you know, fibrin lysis, we have plasmin that destroys the fibrinogen and the fibrin and the stabilized fibrin, producing fibrinogen degradation products, fibrin degradation products, and D-dimer respectively. Plasmin is not left free all the time, it comes from plasminogen. TPA converts plasminogen into plasmin, but not under amino caproic acids watch. We're gonna preserve the clot, baby. We're gonna preserve it. So here's the whole story. Plasminogen into plasmin, then plasmin dissolves the fibrin into fibrin degradation products and the stabilized fibrin to D-dimer. What's the name of this process? Fibrinolysis. Who stimulates this process? TPA. Who inhibits this process? Something from within, something from without. What's from within? Plasminogen activator inhibitors one and two. What's from without or from outside of your body? Anti-fibrinolytic therapy, such as the famous amino caproic acid and tranexamic acid. These guys will inhibit the conversion of plasminogen into plasmin, therefore preserve the fibrin and inhibit its dissolution. In brief, anti-fibrinolytic therapy is anti-TPA and has two main members, epsilon amino caproic acid and tranexamic acid. They do what? They prevent fibrinolysis. How? By preventing conversion of plasminogen into plasmin. So what? They preserve the fibrin meshwork. So, therefore, they reduce bleeding. But as a side effect, if you reduce bleeding, you will cause thrombosis. Amino caproic acid prevents the conversion of plasminogen into plasmin, therefore preserves the fibrin and inhibits its degradation. Okay. So it's an anti-fibrinolytic therapy. Yep, it's used to treat acute bleeding. How? By preserving the fibrin meshwork. No one is going to destroy this beautiful meshwork under my watch, said the amino caproic acid. Therefore, it can cause persistence of blood clots. If you are going to preserve the clot and prevent bleeding, you will cause clotting and thrombosis because actions have consequences. Indications. Bleeding, of course. Severe thrombocytopenia. Bleeding. Coagulation disorders. Bleeding. Cardiac surgery, which can cause bleeding. Invasive dental procedures if the patient is on anticoagulant. Hashtag bleeding. Acute promyelocytic leukemia because in APML there is risk of catastrophic hemorrhage. Hashtag bleeding. And amino caproic acid is the hero to decrease the risk of this catastrophe. In the previous video, we had some bullet points about tranexamic acid. For example, it inhibits the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin via competitive inhibition. 
Bleeding during a dental procedure in case of a hemophilia patient warrants the use of tranexamic acid or aminocaproic acid. Never ever give antifibrinolytic to control hematuria. It doesn't work and it can cause the problem to be worse. Severe DIC plus confirmed fibrinolysis, please give antifibrinolytic, but be very careful because this can lead to thrombosis. In this case, give heparin. Antifibrinolytics can be used in bone filler band disease adjunctively. They are not the main dish. They are not the main entree. They are just helping other therapies to control mucosal bleeding or procedures because these can lead to bleeding. Thank you so much for watching. If you love mnemonics and medical mnemonics, you will enjoy this website called Picmonic. Please check the link in the description below. They are not a sponsor of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe to get all of my notes and all of my cases, including the slides for this lecture and any other lecture. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and these slides are available in PDF forms that are available for instant download and baby they are yours forever. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy and study hard.